that. Playing Horace Pinker was pretty much just kick out the jams and go nuts. It's almost like I felt I couldn't, I couldn't go too far with it. It was one of those experiences where I was just let off the leash and, and just allowed to, to, to go nuts. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to do. I started acting in high school. Um, I was playing sports, and then I had the opportunity to do uh, uh, to do the, the high school musicals. I played Tony in West, West Side Story, and Professor Higgins in My Fair Lady. And, and uh, getting up on that stage and getting that getting that feedback, that immediate feedback from the audience, was like a drug. And uh, it, it's it was something that really uh, that I really liked. And, um, and then I got away, then I got away from it, had another career. After that career was over, uh, or I was done with it, I, I came back, went down to Texas and started doing theater. And uh, once again, being on stage and, and just getting that, that, that feedback from the audience was, was, was just so heady and so wonderful. And, and, and just being able to, to do that, to, it, was, it was such a wonderful creative outlet for me to be on stage, you know, and then, and then eventually I, uh, uh, started doing TV and then some small roles in film and then and, and I moved to LA and met Wes Craven and that kind of pretty much kicked off my career. I think when I first started, when I first came out here, I was, I was um, definitely cast in it because, because of the way I looked. Very, I'm very, very big. I work out a lot, stay in shape and, and uh, my, when I first came out my head was shaved and, and uh, and so I was cast as, as, as a heavy quite often, you know, and, um, which was fine because I just, wanted to, I just wanted to work. I just wanted to do it. When I first auditioned for Shocker, I was originally uh, reading for a different role. I think I was reading for the role of, of, uh, of the coach. And um, I didn't even know that it was a Wes Craven project. And, and I walked into the room and, and Gary Zuckerbrot, who was doing the casting, uh, introduced Wes and, and Mary Ann Madalena. And... Uh, I was I was like I was taken aback because I was like oh geez okay this, this is Wes Craven for God's sakes you know and uh, so anyway I went I went ahead and did uh, did the audition for the coach and then I, I left and and I got a call or my agent got a call from from uh, from Gary and and he said they want you to come back in and read for Horace Pinker and I was like okay well this is this is so cool because it's like I mean he's he's the he's the crazy bad guy in the movie and I was like I get to go and just cut loose and and, and go nuts. Which I did in the audition, and apparently I did scare the hell out of Marianne Madalena. She, uh, she kind of, as, as I, as I re recollect, I remember she kept moving further and further away from me in the room as I was doing, doing my audition, and um, very, I, I made it, I made it very physical, and and, uh, and and really had a lot of fun with it. It was a hoot. You want to watch? Jonathan, do something! Shut up, bitch! You want to watch? Watch this. After I got the got the role and and, and started uh, started working with uh, with Wes, uh, it was it was such a wonderful wonderful experience. He's such a, a he's such a gentleman and such a wonderful gentle person, and and got this great sense of humor. And um, it was you know as as I as I'm as I'm doing Pinker, he's like throwing lines at me saying say this, and I was like. Okay, Wes, <laughs> and I just like I'd say, you know, like I mean, some of the lines in the movie, finger looking good, you know, or some of the other stuff I can't remember, but um, but he just he just kept throwing stuff at me, and and uh, and I just was, you know, I just I just played I just played into it, and, and uh, it was it was a, it was a wonderful wonderful experience being being once again I was I was still relatively young in my career, and to be able to work with somebody like Wes Craven. And learned so much, and he didn't. He didn't. He didn't know what kind of actor I was. He knew that I could physically do this character, but he didn't know that I could that I could act, for sure. Um, you know. And then as as time went on, he he he, he realized that 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 I was I was a you know pretty pretty fair actor, and and he wrote this uh, when you know the, the scene where I get uh, the electrocution scene. He wrote me this great great speech right before 
before they throw the switch, you know, and, and uh, he, he told me, he said, I, I, I realize you can do this, you know, you can, you can handle this dialogue, so he wrote me this great, this great scene. That's right. I was beating you real good when your mama tried to stop me with that gun that she brought into our happy home. You saw me kill her, don't you remember how she screamed? And how clever you were grabbing that gun and shooting me right through the fucking knee, you little peckerhead! It was it was a very physical role. I had I had several stunt guys who did a lot of the stuff, but at, when I was when I was younger, and I'm paying for it now, uh, I always wanted to do my own fights. I always wanted to do a lot of my own stunts, you know, my falls, jumps, whatever. Um, now my body's racked with arthritis as a result of it. But at the time, I didn't care. I was just ready to throw myself into, into every aspect of it. So it was, it was very physical. The fights were, were very physical with Pete Berg. Um, he and I just, he and I just went, went at each other. It, it was, it was, it was crazy. I mean, it was really crazy. And. Um, the limp was always there. It was in the script. Uh, I didn't start shooting right away. They had they had, uh, they had they had started shooting. So and there was in, in the in the film, Pinker takes over people's bodies. Their electrical energy in their bodies. When I got to the set to start working on my first day, I said, "Okay." I said to Wes, "I said, okay, I got this great limp worked out." And I, and I started to show him. And he goes. Well, we've already established the limp. There was a little girl who's at one point in the movie, uh, Horace takes over her body, and, and she was the first one to do the limp. So I had to match her limp, which was, uh, which was kind of a bummer for me because I had this great limp. And she was, she did, I mean, she had a really good, and it, it was, it turned out fine. Uh, it was fun playing the limp. You know, it's a lot of times there was just, the camera was just on the leg dragging, you know, behind me. And it was, it was, uh, it was, it was cool. It was very effective, and, and, uh, and I'm glad they put it in. I'm glad it was part of the character. Hey! What the fuck? Pete was always ready to do whatever he wanted to do, man. He just, he was, you know, he just, he's, he had such a, an amazing energy, and he's still got a great energy from what I understand. I haven't seen him in a long time. Um, but he had a great attitude. Um, he came to play, and uh, and we played really hard doing these characters. And it's funny because at the time I remember Pete saying to he telling I was I was having a conversation with him, and, and, and I was I always noticed that he was always always watching everything that West did, and everything that was going on in, in, in Video Village, and, and and just you know what was you know how things were going about. And and one day he said to me, he goes, one of these days I'm going to be a big director. But sure enough, he, well, he is, you know, so he, uh, he called it, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for him, very proud of him. The special effects and special effects makeup, David Anderson did my burns that occurred as a result of the electrocution. But, um, and I was, I was in the chair with him a lot. Got to know David pretty good. And he was a great dude, he did a wonderful job. And when I first came in to, to, do, the, uh, to do the movie, I had, I had the, the fringe on my, you know, the hair on the sides of my head. And I said, I said, what's, how are we going to do this now? He goes, well, we're just going to put glue in your hair, and we're going to glue this thing down. I said, well, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think we're going to put glue in my hair. I said, there's not a whole lot of hair there as it is, and I don't want to lose the rest of it. So I said, I will shave my head. And so they went to Wes, and Wes said, absolutely, that sounds great, shave your head. So that made things a lot easier as far as putting the appliance on and taking it off, not having to deal with getting glue out of my, out of my hair every, every night. As far as the uh, the special effects jumping through the TV, it was it was physically hard, and it was you know like I said, it was it took a toll on my body. But uh, um, you know, I, it was I think it was I think it was well worth it. You know, and, and uh, it was all part of the, the physicality of, of the character and staying true to what was going on with with the character in the, in the film. It was it was uh, it was just part of the deal, and I was I was like I said, being young, I was just fine with it. We shot in a, different, a lot of different locations, but we did have a big warehouse 
downtown that we had a lot of sets built on and, and used used a lot. And it was it was very hot. It was we shot during the summer and it was uh, pretty pretty sweltering. And, and that was one of the, one of the problems with the, the appliance, the glue on my head, because I was sweating like a bastard. And it was you know it would, it would sometimes loosen the, the edges up and and. Uh, um, so it, it was plus just doing all that physical physicality, you know, in, in that type of heat, in a big warehouse that was dusty, and, and of course we were using smoke, um, atmospheric smoke, and, and and so it was, uh, it could get very stifling, very stifling, but it kind of played into what we were doing and kind of lent itself to to what I was doing with the character and just the whole the, the whole atmosphere of of, uh, of the scenes that we were doing, so. It was pretty cool. Yeah! First time I saw the movie was at the premiere. And uh, I, I had so much fun watching it. Um, sometimes I was a little uncomfortable watching how crazy the character was or how, how crazy the, my portrayal of Horace Pinker was. Because um, it was over the top at times, you know? And, but, it was, but it was fun and, and uh, uh, just, you know, just just it was it was probably one of the first big roles that I that I had. You know, um, so for me it was very heady and very very you know overwhelming. And I, I was like I was very excited about the whole thing and going to the premiere and my parents were there and my brothers and sisters were there. So that was that was uh, that was a real. I got to show them that look I'm I'm doing it. You know I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing what I wanted to do, and um, and so. So to, to, to be able to, to, to have them there and, and uh, at the movie and watching it, it was, it was a trip. I, I, I really, I really, I got a kick out of it. I think it was, I think it was Wes, Wes's intention for this to be a franchise, for it to be another, um, Freddy Krueger type character, and um, I think that um, it just didn't happen, you know, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, it, it just it just didn't didn't come about, you know. Now he didn't specifically talk to me at the time about you know about it, but I, I think it was it was in their minds that they wanted to make it you know type of a, a franchise character. Um, so when it didn't happen, it was like, okay, well, we just we just we move on and, and, and do something else. I know I just worked with uh, uh, one of his protégés, Nick Simon, who was uh, Wes is, is uh, producing a movie that uh, that Nick is is directing. It's called the The Girl in the Photographs, and I just finished shooting it about a month month or so ago, and uh, and he's he was talking a lot about wanting to bring back shocker and redo it you know and and uh, and i said if you do it i want to be like i'll be a, i'll be a dead body on the ground i'll be you know walk through the background or i'll be you know fixing a repairing a tv or whatever it's like just 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 make sure that i'm i'm in it in some small capacity that's not that's not distracting but uh, i think it'd be a lot of fun um and we'll see you know i, I don't know but uh, anything can happen in this business <laughs> Buckle, I'm just gonna kick your ass, boy. Go, go, go. Shut up! Well, you're looking good. <laughs> My final thoughts on, on, on Shocker are it was it was very very important, very instrumental in my career, and, 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 and I, I, I learned so much, and, and I met so many wonderful people through it. Um, I'm too old to play Horace if they came back. I, it, it would kill me. But uh, I, I'm sure that there's, a, there's another young actor out there, if they ever decide to do it, who would just who would take the reins and just, and just have a, as, as much fun with it as, as, as I did. Um, and, I, and I hope that, you know, with I'd love to see. I'd, I'd love to see it done again with the technology, with the special effects that they have available to them now. What they what they'd be able to do with, with with you know with Horace going through all those different uh, things that he went through, it, it, it would be it would be fascinating. 
It just wouldn't be, be me. I would do. I would play an extra in it. I would do. I would do any role in it that they wanted me to do. I'd, I'd, I'd be there for any, any, any in any as, aspect that they wanted me to. But uh, playing Horace, I think, would probably kill me if I tried to do it again. Come on, give it to me. You got it, baby. Prisoner, have any final words? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>